Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Um, this time uh, I did promise last time um, on the faces video, if you caught that, um, that I'd actually show how I do faces using a brush as well as um, the last video where I used an airbrush. Um, so this one I'll just be going over using a brush to, to complete a face, slightly different technique for people that don't own an airbrush. Um, obviously it takes a little bit longer to get a good result. Um, airbrush does save quite a lot of time especially with bulk painting things like that so anyways let's get started on this so uh, the paints that we're going to use today um, I'm going to use uh, Bugman's Glow as a base color uh, Reekland Flesh Shade obviously as a shade uh, and this is the order that I'll be actually doing these in as well guys um, then uh, I would go back to Bugman's then uh, Cadian Flesh Tone and then Kislev Flesh to highlight. So four four paints there, four different colours. Uh, well, one shade obviously, um, but it's quite a nice easy process to get this done. Now, this is the head we're going to be using today, just a basic Space Marine head, so we can show you on a basic head what this is going to work like. Sorry about this not focusing. There we go. Um, just basic sort of sergeant head there. It's already been um, primed down with, um, it's, I just used the uh, Vallejo um, polyurethane primer, um, just the just the grey one there. Um, sometimes I use the Chaos Black sort of uh, spray from GW, but completely up to you what you use. I don't really find it makes too much difference. Um, I just generally use what sort to hand, you know, what's easiest to hand. So, to start with, obviously, our Bugman's Glow. Now, as usual, it looks to you guys that I'm using these paints straight out of the pots, but I do I do pre-water them down in the pots. Um, so just take a little bit of your Bugman's Glow. Now, generally, with your base coat, your first coat here, um, you're going to need to think about um, putting on quite a thin layer, maybe even two layers. So... Put it on nice and thin, you don't want to obscure any detail here. Make sure you get over everywhere that needs the flesh on it. So this guy's got a little bit of a scar going up into his hairline there. One not to forget as well as the ears, quite a lot of heads have the ears sort of uh, tucked behind hair if they have longer hair, something like that. Um, and also make sure you get under the chin as well. Brilliant. So that's the first layer done on that. Now you'll see that this isn't necessarily going to be a solid coat, so you might need to do more than one coat, which we will on this head. But as I say, you don't want to obscure any details. So we'll leave that one to dry. As soon as that's dry, we'll come back, do another coat, and then we'll be on to the wash. See you in a second. Right, that's all nice and dried now. Uh, so we're just going to put a second coat on the face here, um, just to make that Bugman's Glow nice and solid. You don't really want the primer to show through on this, okay? So just give it another good lashing of the paint. Um, but obviously, like I say, water your paint down. Don't put too much on. You don't want to obscure any details. Make sure you get under the hair um, if they've got sort of a bit of a fringe going on. Under the chin, make sure you get all the places that you might find that you've missed. Anything that's recessed. That's it. Right, just let that dry off and then we put the wash on guys. Okay, so you see here, we've got the base coat all done there. Nice solid colouring on the guy. Um, you don't want sort of, uh, like I say, sort of thin coat and seeing through to the primer because the primer might not have gone on exactly even, but you don't want to see all of that. Right, so next level is uh, Reekland Flesh Shade. Um, you'll see that there. Uh, nice, it's uh, one of GW's washes. Now, obviously, no need to water down washes, just straight on. 
Um, I generally with a face like to put quite a heavy coat of this on so don't be too scared um, obviously when it dries it does kind of um, r reduce in mass so if you get sort of puddles of it in, in, in the details and things like that that's absolutely fine that's what it's designed to do so make sure you get nice shading going on shade around the eyes around the around the sort of areas that obviously are recessed on this head so maybe he, this guy's got quite big cheekbones you want you want his cheeks to be uh, quite um, quite nicely shaded so let me just bring that in and show you how that's going there we go so you see nice and shaded all around there so we'll leave that to dry um, come back and then the next level will be starting to layer this guy up and starting to give him a bit more sort of highlight and, and pull out some of the details on his face. See you in a second. Right, so see the wash is dry now guys. Just bring that in for you to have a little look. Nice and dark and shaded everywhere we need it to be. So next step is to actually go back in with Bugman's to bring back some of the, uh, some of the raised areas. Now the reason I go back in with the same layer I put on to start with it's just because it, it helps then the next layers to, to, to sort of blend in together a bit easier um, rather than sort of stark differences in colour. Um, so with this one, as I say, we just need to go in and start sort of lining in um, around the raised areas. Um, cover quite a lot of it, um, but obviously still leave the, uh, the main areas you want shaded. Tell you what guys, just going to move the camera a little bit, bear with me. Yeah, I apologise about the big gold splodge there. I uh, knocked over one of my pots a couple of days ago and uh, didn't manage to scrape it all off my mat. Um, so it'd be a case of getting a new mat in for this one I think. Now this layer will only be a subtle difference um, compared to the shade that you've just put on, but that's all you want, just a subtle bringing back in of the colours that you've just, just shaded away. So you see here, if I just get that to focus in again for you, just keeping all the dark areas dark and the, and the higher areas are all starting to come back to the Bugman's colour. Now again you can do a few layers of this depending on how high you want to bring that back because obviously your paint being watered down you, um, you might need to put a couple of coats on just to bring it back to the Bugman's colour. And uh, on this, generally on faces, I use sort of a one or a zero brush just so that I can get all the details done. But um, if you get a decent set of brushes, then a, a, a one should have a good enough point on it for you. Just get around that ear. There we go. So that's brought that back to the Bugman's colour there. So you see that's nice and uh, evened out. Now the next level on this goes up to Cadian, uh, Cadian Flesh Tone. Uh, so you see there, uh, just one of the layer paints. Now this is a lot lighter than Bugsman, uh, Bugman's, so start by putting it on quite softly, um, not too sort of heavy and sort of put more than one layer if need be. It's always easier to put a lighter colour uh, and then go over if you need to. Uh, obviously if you put too much on you can't then change that. So start off soft. And you want to leave some of the Bugman's showing that you've put on because obviously 
you want this to grade in, you don't just want it to take over. Make sure you work to the shape of the face. So just look at the face, look at where the light would be hitting on the face and just highlight those areas. This guy's got a bit of a bum chin so kind of play that out a little bit more using the, using the layering. All these definitions in the face is what, what will make this face look realistic at the end. Now this guy on his forehead has got a big scar so what we're going to do with the scar is leave that flesh dark naturally around a scar your scar tissue generally will stay a bit darker um, a bit defined and we'll bring that out in in some time as well we bring that out with a bit more of a pinky colour so that you can kind of see the soreness of it. It's always good to try and get all the details like just get that little sort of bag under the eyes as well um, just bring that out just sort of highlights the eyes a bit then. Just get those, get his lips That's cool, right? So you'll start to see now, this is starting to get nice and defined, this face. Start seeing it, all the definition in it. Now, next layer up from Eucadian, I go to a Kislev. Again, watered down so it's a nice thin coat. Um, generally with this as well, you use it to really highlight the, the, the sort of the edges, um, the, the, the real peaks in, in the face. So obviously the nose is a, is a lot higher than any other part of the face so you're going to want to highlight that and then things like the cheekbones get a nice shade on the uh, nice highlight on the head as well on the forehead because obviously that's where the light is going to hit the face to start with. Highlight like the tops of the ears, anywhere that this the, the, the light would hit the face, you know. And around the scar, you just want to highlight the areas around the scarring, but not actually in the scar.
okay so see how we go in there you see now you've got a real sense of definition in the face the detail is where it needs to be now I've done this guy quite pale um, not sort of that much colour in his face quite a light skin tone rather than a tanned skin tone um, that's just how I like to do mine you can use sort of dark colours you can sort of mix a sort of very small amounts of browns in to bring your skin tones to a more sort of dark colour um, now the next kind of stage I do with this guys is uh, is putting in um, like things like the uh, eyes teeth and then start with the hair and, and the metal work around the back of the head for a space marine so for the teeth I use screaming skull um, which is one of the layer paints again water it down nice and we go in very very softly with the teeth just to get a bit of definition on the teeth there so see there it looks quite stark quite bold you can go in put a tiny little dab of uh, Agrax earth shade in, in on the teeth and it will bring the teeth back to sort of merged in with the rest of the face now the eyes on this face are quite tricky because it is a very 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 small slip for the eyes so you've got to be very careful with this now you can touch up afterwards so don't worry too much there we go there's his eyes done right um, this guy let's say um, for his hair we would just do it we just do a, a uh, gray hair for this guy so dark gray um, so for this start off with uh, a bad and black Now again with the Abaddon Black you might need one or two layers because um, obviously you want it to be thinned down to start with. You don't want to put it on too thick and end up with uh, sort of detail missing from the hair or, or filled in any sort of bits that you didn't want to fill in you know. So leave that bit where the scar is. Now you see immediately just by putting on hair, this starts to bring this guy into looking like an actual uh, face rather than uh, sort of not so realistic. Now, whilst the black's drying, I'm going to put some lead belcher on around the metal work on the head. Just start tying it all together. It's quite good on the Space Marines that you have the lead belcher around sort of the back of the head and the bottom of the head because it kind of frames uh, frames the face that you've just done again with lead belcher you might need one or two coats nearly there with the silver work
There we go, so you see that this is starting to really sort of... Um, sorry guys, the camera is really playing up today. No focus on it whatsoever. Let's just bring it out a little bit. Should focus a bit easier for us. There we go. Right, so you see there, starting to really sort of bring the head together now, the face together. So there's also on this guy, he's got a couple, uh, he's got a little command dot um, on his forehead. So the Space Marines, a lot of them have these little dots on their forehead. Now what they're designed for is the little studs, little metal studs to say sort of how high up that Space Marine is and um, what sort of rank he is. Now naturally in their armour you'll see um, markings and things on their armour anyway. But imagine they're all sort of they're on downtime, they're on their ships or whatever, um, they're in their robes, kind of defines who they are. Now we'll uh, put another, what I'll do is I'll put another quick layer of silver and black on. Once I've done that I'll come back and we'll take you through the next step guys. Right, so finished off the silver and the black going to start layering that now to make that look more even and pull that into realistic um, so obviously with the silver standard over lead belcher is a, a wash of known oil um, now again put this on quite liberally because um, you want this to sort of real darken this metal work down Get it in all the recesses, don't worry too much if you go over onto the hair because obviously we've only got the black coat on the hair at the moment. Now this layer just tones down the metal work and then we can go over and highlight, bring out the sort of edges, make it real look like it's real shiny. Um, whilst that's drying what we're going to do is uh, the hair um, naturally a wash takes a little while to dry so what I've done here is uh, I've got just an old um, Citadel brush um, and I generally after I'm done with them I just snip the ends off and turn them into like little stippling brushes I do have the hard stippling brushes but these make quite nice soft stippling brushes so it's kind of like a dry brush that we're going to do but we're going to do it by dabbing rather than actual brushing so keep a little bit more paint on the brush than you normally would for a dry brush um, but we're stippling this on so just go over and just dot it on because this guy's got like cropped hair um, generally obviously cropped hair is not going to look like um, it's not going to you're not going to brush it on with a dry brush you don't want sort of um, actual brush stroke marks you want dots you want stippling but I find that the stippling brushes can be quite quite sort of aggressive, quite hard. So these using these as softer ones works really well. So you see that's really brought down into a grey now, into a into a dark grey. Now generally what I'll do as well is just do one last little sorry, that was eshing grey I used there. Um use one little last stipple of a uh, dawnstone grey, which is a real light grey. Now just do this on like the top of the head and um, it will just really sort of show the lights hitting on the top of the head, you know. There we go, so you see that now looks a lot more realistic than it did before. You see around the back we've kept it nice and dark where it goes into the metalwork, so that's that sorted out, that's his hair done there guys, so eshing grey and then dawnstone grey, two simple steps on top of a badden just stippled in, gives you sort of like a grey cropped hair effect. Now uh, your next kind of step on this one guys will be highlighting the metalwork, um, so for that go iron breaker, iron breaker is a uh, obviously a silver layer, now it's much much li lighter than uh, lead belcher. Um, and again you just want to highlight the parts that, that are raised on this so generally I'll just go around sort of the top of the metal work this you can put this on quite nice and thick this one because um, it does blend quite well into the layer below anyway being silvers, being metallics
Okay. And uh, you don't necessarily want to highlight too much around the bottom because it's going to be in his uh, collar once he's attached to his suit of armour. Okay, so that's the metal work just highlighted on there, so just bring that in a bit for you again. So we're starting to look like we've almost got a completed face now. Okay, now you'll notice on the metal work on quite a lot of Space Marines, um, there are sort of little lights and things like that, um, where they sort of have uh, in indicators or, or uh, signalling devices. So I generally just dot these in with a little bit of uh, Evil Sun's E, uh, sorry, Evil Sun's Scarlet, which is a nice bright red. So just dot that in there. So just like that, just brings that on the side there, just brings it to life, looks it and makes it look a little bit uh, on. Um, and the last part of this head, the final stage, is for us to uh, the uh, the scar. So just to bring the scar out a little bit. Now for this, I will mix a little bit of colouring for you. Um, so I use a bit of Bugman's Glow. Um, so a little bit of Bugman's Glow and uh, a, a bit of the uh, the Evil Sun Scarlet that um, we've just we've just used. Now, as I say, you only need a very, very tiny bit of this red. It's a very strong red, um, and you only want this um, this pink scar to stand out a little bit more than the uh, the rest of the skin. You only want it to be a tiny bit pinker, not um, like aggressively pinker, you know, because it's uh, it's an old scar. Right. So, scar is in the top on the top of the head. Just want to follow that down to the down his down his forehead. So just pull that in for you, so you can see that. So yeah, just on his forehead, it's a little bit of pink just to bring that out. And that, guys, is the head done. So what I'll do is I will um, take a couple of photographs of this, um, just so you guys can see uh, at the end of the video the finished article a bit better. Um, any questions about how to do the faces? Uh, what I've done here today. Just let me know, uh, comment below, or look me up on Facebook. Um, obviously, my uh, my name is uh, Charles Burley, so you'll find me on Facebook under that, or you can look the page up for Escalation Painting. Um, quite a lot of new videos going up at the moment that I'm trying to get through over the next week. Uh, I'm working on a new Dark Eldar army, so I've got a lot of stuff coming up that will be about that. Um, and uh, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I uh, hope you liked it. Cheers. Bye.